10% of all deer hunters kill 90% of the mature bucks. And 100% of those deer hunters attest that off-season scouting is the number one reason for their success. All right, all right, nobody fact checked me on those statistics, but there's no denying that if you wanna have an action-packed fall, one of the most important things you can do is get out into the woods and put together some of those puzzle pieces. In this video, I'm gonna walk through everything that I take with me on these scouting trips. Really quickly, if you like hunting videos, hunting tips, and gear reviews, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. That way you can stay up to date on all of my hunting adventures throughout the year. Now to set the stage, all you really need to scout for gear is some boot leather to burn. However, I'm gonna walk through some of the things that I take with me just to make sure that I'm prepared for any situation. We will start with a super overlooked detail and that's making sure that you don't get tore up by ticks and chiggers. I spray all of my clothes with Sawyer's permethrin. This stuff you spray on all of your scouting clothes and all your early season hunting clothes as well. Let it dry and then that's gonna be good for multiple washes and generally it'll last for a whole season. I always spray at the beginning of summer and then beginning of fall again. It's a night and day difference. If you put this on your clothes, you're not gonna get ticks, you're not gonna get chiggers and other bugs. And then if you go in the woods with an untreated shirt, a lot of times I'll go in with a new set of clothes or a pair of jeans that I haven't treated before and I'll end up pulling ticks off me. I've been using this stuff the last four or five years and have yet to have a tick on me while wearing treated clothes so I can't speak highly enough of that stuff. The next thing that's always with me, whether I'm driving around looking for deer, running cameras or doing my off-season scouting, is my binos. I'm running the Vortex Viper HD 10 by 42s and in my opinion, this is the perfect size for whitetail hunting. These weren't cheap, but the glass is awesome and Vortex has an amazing warranty. I had a pair of the Vortex Crossfires. The eyepiece wiggled a little bit. It was more cosmetic than anything, but I sent the binos into Vortex. They sent me a brand new pair of the updated version of the Crossfires with no questions asked. So. It's kind of that buy once, cry once thing, but buy the best glass that you can afford. These are awesome binos and I always have them with me. I keep my binos in this bino harness. This is by Alps Extreme. I found that the bino harness that comes with most Vortex binoculars is a little bit noisy and I didn't care for it too much. I've been running this one by Alps for the last three or four seasons and really, really like it. It's got a pocket down here at the bottom that I keep all of my hunting tags in so that way they're always on me when I'm in the field. So that way, whether I'm changing packs throughout the season or changing changing camo instead of keeping it in a pant leg or something like that. They're always on me regardless of what I'm doing and where I'm at in the woods. And then the other thing that I really like about these is it has a little side pocket. And in that, I keep this little change purse. It's literally a rubber change purse. I bought it on Amazon. And inside, I keep that filled with milkweed and I'm able to check the wind. Let's see, that's not very windy in my office here but I'm able to check the wind and whether I'm scouting, whether I'm walking into a tree stand, whatever I'm doing in the woods, I'm generally always checking the wind just to see what it's doing. And I like having that easily accessible. Next up is the pack. And for 99% of my scouting missions, I've been running this backpack. It's a low pro flip side trek. It's actually designed for camera gear, but I found it to be a really nice size. I've customized it a little bit. And by customized, I mean, I took a rattle can and spray painted it camo to kind of cover up some of the colors that it had on there. I've been using this for turkey hunting. I've been using this for whitetail hunting hunting from the ground. I use it for a lot of my scouting. It just is a really nice compact backpack with multiple compression straps on the front. It's got compression straps on the side. And then on top and then on the back, they have these padded compartments designed to protect your camera gear. But I've found that it's really nice for storing extra water, for storing food, or even stacking up a bunch of trail cameras and transporting in or out of the woods. And in here, I have basically three categories of stuff. I have my essentials, I have my scouting tools, and then I have my in case of emergency stuff. For essentials, I always have water with me. I don't understand how some people just camel up and go out into the woods. I have to have water with me. I prefer these Nalgene bottles with the small openings at the top to reduce spilling, but I buy them in these natural colors so they blend in that way when I'm hunting. They don't stick out like a sore thumb. Depending on how long I'm gonna be in the woods and how warm it is, it's gonna dictate how many of these I bring, but generally I'll bring one or two Nalgene bottles and that gets me through a day. This thing is some kind of food. These Lara bars have been my jam lately. The almond butter chocolate chip has been my favorite flavor, but depending on how long I plan to be in the woods, I'll have one or two of these with me. If it's gonna be an all day scouting mission, I'll generally make some peanut butter and jellies and have one or two with me as well. The last of the essentials is caffeine pills. I get these little Jet Alert bottles. It's like four or five bucks for a bottle of these things. It's just way more convenient than bringing out a Jet Boil and some type of pour over coffee or even carrying an energy drink around in the woods. This is 120 cups of coffee essentially. This is what I use when I'm on the road hunting. It's super difficult to get up at three in the morning, four in the morning and have energy all day long. So I've been taking these caffeine pills and I just throw them in all of my packs. So that way I'm never without. Side note, one thing that I never take into the woods with me that probably would be considered an essential by most people is toilet paper. Most times with a few exceptions, 
I make it back to the truck without having to do my business in the field. I prefer not to. I actually prefer a toilet, believe it or not. Now, as far as my scouting tools go, the number one most important thing is my cell phone with the Onyx Hunt app. If you don't have Onyx, you're missing out big time. It's the number one GPS hunt app, and it's gonna allow you to see property boundaries, property owner information. It's gonna allow you to track your path as you're scouting through the woods, and it's gonna let you put waypoints down to document all of your findings. For that reason also, I always carry a portable battery pack and a phone charger. I very, very rarely have to use these because the batteries in these cell phones are so good nowadays. But in the event I got stuck out in the woods and I'm dependent on my phone, I'm gonna have a battery pack just to make sure that I'm covered. These next two things don't always come with me, but if I'm in an area that I'm running trail cameras, they're gonna come with me. And that's my SD card reader and my spare SD cards. If I'm checking a trail camera that's in an established place or if I'm confident I'm gonna leave it, a lot of times I'll just swap the SD cards. But if it's a newer camera and I wanna see if it was a productive place, I will check the SD card while I'm in the field. And I've tried a lot of the cheap plug-in ones on your phone. I've yet to find one that I like. So I bought this one, it's by HME. You can play both pictures and videos on this thing. I can't remember quite how much it costs. I'll link it down below in the description. And then as far as my SD cards, I keep them in these Pelican cases. And these Pelican cases are waterproof and they are also a great way to organize your SD card. So it holds about a dozen SD cards. And if they are right side up, that means that they are cleared, ready to be deployed into a new camera. If I pull one out of a camera and stick it in here, I will put it face down so that way it sticks out and I don't mistakenly put that into another camera. So it's a great way to organize your SD cards, keep them all in one place, keep them dry, keep them protected. If I'm just running on a quick mission to check some trail cameras, I'll just slip this in my back pocket. The last of my scouting tools is a climbing stick. And I only take this if I plan on running trail cameras. If I'm just burning boot leather trying to figure out an area or if it's winter and I don't plan on putting any cameras up this stays in the truck but if I am gonna run trail cameras I'm taking this with me the climbing stick allows me to hang my trail cameras 10 or 12 feet up which is a good practice in general just because it's gonna prevent deer from seeing your cameras and being spooked by them it's also gonna prevent people from seeing your cameras and trying to steal them so if you're on public land just by hanging them 10 or 12 feet up can prevent a lot of people from stealing your cameras I also cable lock mine when I'm on public land but it's a good practice as well for the deer because a lot of times you'll see those deer stare right at your camera, whether it's the faint infrared glow or maybe it makes a little bit of a click. I think by putting it out of view and just a little bit elevated, it mitigates a lot of that and you're not gonna spook nearly as many deer as you would if it's at ground level. This is the Out on a Limb Shakar. It's a lightweight, really, really nice climbing stick. This year I'm gonna be using the Carbon Speed Series sticks by Latitude Outdoors and I'm super, super pumped to try those out. The last category of stuff is the in case of emergency gear. And that's the stuff that you don't really plan on using, but you're gonna be really, really grateful to have it in the event that you do. So the first thing in that category would be a knife. And this is a bear knife, it's actually a gutting knife. It has a bone saw and a gut hook on too. This one keeps a really Really nice edge on it so I like having this one but whether it's this knife or another knife I'm always gonna have one with me because you never know when you're gonna need one the next thing is a black diamond headlight whether I just take longer than planned in the woods or I get turned around get lost last thing I want to do is be out there in the dark not being able to see so I always have a flashlight with me I know cell phones have lights on them and I've had to use those before but in the event your phone dies goes in the water whatever you need a flashlight it's always good to have one these next two items probably come from the boy scout in me but I always have a compass and I have a lighter and nowadays so many of us are dependent on our phones including myself I use Onyx religiously so in the event that I drop my phone break my phone lost my phone dropped it in a river all of a sudden my phone is worthless I have to be able to navigate myself back out of the woods so I always keep a compass Compass isn't gonna run out of batteries. A compass isn't gonna let you down. At least you can have a general bearing on what direction you're traveling and get your way back to your vehicle. I keep these little mini Bic lighters in my pack. I've never had to use one. And it's just nice to have fire with you. Fire is life. And if you're far away from your truck, you get cold and you get wet, you're gonna wanna warm yourself up, dry out your clothes. So it's just one of those things. Again, might never need it, but I'd rather have it and not need it than be out there freezing, soaking wet, and not have a way to make fire. The last thing I take with me, especially if I'm not gonna have service or if I'm gonna be out of state, is what I call my O oh shit button. And this is a satellite communication device. This is the Spot Gen 4. It allows you to basically call in an SOS. It allows you to contact people and let them know you need help. You can also check in and say that you're okay if you're somewhere off the grid. If you have people depending on you, you have a wife, you have kids, I'm soon gonna be a father, you gotta make sure you're gonna come home every time. 
So this is super, super important. I love having this with me. It makes me feel a lot safer. It gives me some peace of mind that even if I don't have cell service, if I'm in hill country and I'm in the bottom and all of a sudden I snap my ankle, I can at least call for help. The last thing, I feel like Santa Claus pulling presents out of his sack. Uh, the last thing I'll take with me is a thermocell, and this is good for keeping mosquitoes at bay, especially if you're scouting in the summertime or out there checking trail cameras. It can be brutal. It's a jungle out there. Thermocell, you fire it up, you clip it to your backpack. I just have a little carabiner on the back here. And I like the carabiner more than the little plastic clip that comes with a lot of thermocells. I've actually lost a few because the clips have came loose and thermocells popped off. I switched to a carabiner, haven't lost one since, but super, super clutch. Thermocells are great, this is the 450. If you're just going for a quick walk behind your house, obviously a lot of this stuff could be seen as overkill, but I'd rather have this stuff and be prepared for whatever situation comes at me. It's a small price to pay to carry this little bit of weight in and out of the woods each time. Scouting and intimately learning your hunting areas is the number one thing you could do to increase your chances of success, so hopefully you found some of these items helpful. I'll link to all of these things down below in the description, but if there's things that I've missed or things that you think are complete ways to take with you in the woods, please let me know down below in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you can follow along with all of my hunting adventures throughout the year. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.